Okay, y'all ready? So I paused this video because I wanna give you the breakdown on the fundamentals as I understand them. Now, you know I'm working on strengthening this skill, but my buddies Ryan and Benny, they have this down pat. And so this is what we talked about this morning. With GBP, JPY, there's a couple things that can happen and influence how this currency pair moves. So the first thing is that there is potential risk of war. And so that will definitely impact how this moves and then also there is talks of the interest rates being increased but there's no inclination from the government on how aggressive and how quickly they will raise these rates so we don't know if they're going to be raised 50 basis points 100 basis points like next week we, we don't know when that happens we're moving into a risk off scenario when there's uncertainty in the market investors want to protect their capital so what we see is that they want to move their money to safe spaces and the safe space in gbp jpy is the japanese yen the japanese yen is one of the safe haven currencies when we see money being moved into the yen it becomes stronger right there's more money being put into that currency so it becomes stronger and so in this scenario if we got the great british pound that becomes weak and the japanese yen that becomes strong that presents a potential selling opportunity all right let's get back to the chart Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. This is Casey, long time no see, right? It's been a minute, probably more like 32 days since I've last uploaded a video to this channel. And um, y'all, January was rough. <laughs> January was a trying time for me, um, probably the last four weeks, five weeks. It, uh, yeah, but I'm good now, I'm here. I got sick. I have been recuperating and recharging and just getting ready for a really, really, really phenomenal year. And I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to bring you guys um, some new information. And so today, what I want to do is I want to go over GBP JPY. Now, we covered this this morning in our weekly Forex ritual. If you are not already a member, you can click below um, the link that says mentorship opportunities. We get together on the weekends and during the week. And uh, on the weekends, it's the longer session. It's about three hours. We go through all 28 pairs that we trade and we look at the technical analysis and we look at the fundamental analysis in order to determine what our setup is going to be, how we're going to approach the market. So I welcome you to join us. We'd love to have you. I can't even take credit for this setup as I have been down <laughs> nursing myself back to health. Uh, my buddy Ryan uh, went over this this morning and when he was breaking it down, I said, oh, this makes a ton of sense. So I wanted to share it with all of you guys because it has the potential to be a really, really, really big play. Um, and so it will give you an idea of how we approach the market, what we do on Saturday mornings, what we do on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays in the morning and at night. Um, this is just more in detail. So I'm going to break down GBP JPY for you. Let's take a look. All right, so I am on the monthly. And for those of you guys who are new to the channel, um, I do a top-down analysis. It gives me a um, high-level overview of what's going on in the market. Um, you probably heard people say the higher time frames control the lower time frames. And so that is why I start off on the monthly. Now, I apologize for those of you guys who... <laughs> who already know what I'm about to do. I'm going to do this for the new folks. Um, when I go through my multiple time frame analysis, what I'm looking for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. What I'm looking for on each time frame is a swing high and a swing low. So what I've illustrated right here is the swing high and then the swing, well, let me back up. What I've illustrated right here is a swing high. And a swing high is just a five candle formation. You've got two candles to the left that are lower, one in the center that is higher, and two to the right that are lower. 
That's the technical definition of a swing high. Now, it won't always look like this. It might be ugly and you might have a short body and a long wig. And, but if it meets the technical definition of a high center candle with two candles to the right and left that are lower, that's a swing high. The swing low is just the inverse. You have a low center candle. You got two candles to the left that are higher and two candles to the right that are higher. So that's what I look for. Now, <clears throat> if you are not using, <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. If you are not using Spark Trader, you have to be able to go in and identify this manually. But one of the things that I love about Smart Trader is that um, there is, um, within this system, there are provisions for you to be able to do this using, using um, just the system. So I'll show you. Um, I won't eyeball it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in here. And if you're interested in Smart Trader, you can click the link below the video. You can try it out for 30 days for $4.99, I believe it is. Um, <clears throat> but what I do, I go to my Smart Toolbox. The Smart Toolbox has the A, B, C, D, and then like the arrow. And um, I go in and I grab my Smart Support, which shows me all of the support levels on the monthly. So now what you can do from there, <clears throat> I draw zones. So I'm gonna go from the bottom of this area to the bottom of the body of the candle. I'm gonna stretch that across and then I'm gonna make sure that I identify this area as my monthly zone. So what the system does is what we do manually. When we go in and we look for the five candle formation, the system has already figured it out. Now, this is not a full <clears throat> this is not the swing low. The swing low, <laughs> come on, Microsoft. The swing low is right here. This is the swing low. So let me see if I can zoom in. <clears throat> so the swing low is right here. You have the low center candle. Then you got two candles to the right that are higher and two candles to the left that are higher. This is why the system picked this up as a level of support. And you'll see that this does not look like what I drew, but it technically meets the definition. And so that's why it's counted. So you see how it has S1 and then it gives you the support level. So it's identifying every single support level on this time frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark this off. And then I don't leave these lines on my chart. Um, when I do check it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and identify that second level because I am interested in that. And then I'm not going to look at the third level just right now, um, just because price is so far away. Okay. So in order to get rid of it, I just go back to the top of the chart, click smart support, and then it's gone. See? <clears throat> and so now... I'm looking at levels of resistance and I see one right here. I got a high center candle. Let's zoom in. I got a high center candle right here, two candles to the left that are lower and two candles to the right that are lower. So I, I suspect that this is going to be chosen as my level of resistance. So to double check that, I'll go over to my smart toolbox, set up smart resistance, and it's exactly where I pointed out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a zone for this area. And I forgot to mention I use gold as my monthly. And so I'm actually going to draw here. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing from the top of this wick up here and to the top of the lower wick down here. And that's going to be my zone. So this is the resistance level. Let me see where else it might be pointing out a resistance level. I'm not necessarily interested in it because this is the monthly chart <clears throat> and it's so far away. See, yeah, it would take forever. So my main concern is just the resistance level one. And it looks like we are sitting at a significant level. So price has tried one, two, three times to break this level on the monthly and it hasn't yet. So I'm going to get rid of this. And then now that I've done and I've identified my monthly significant zones, I'm going to drop down to the weekly and I'm going to see what I see on the weekly. <clears throat> and what I'm looking for are my next swing high, swing lows within these two bounds. 
How many pips is this? 700 pips. So this is a big range right now. So from, what is this? July? Let's call it September. We've been trading in this range. Okay. So I'm looking for my next swing low. So I got the five candle formation here. This would be considered a level of support. <clears throat> on Oh, I'm on the daily. Let me go to the weekly. I done messed up. Yep, so this is still a level of support. You got a low center candle. Let me zoom in. Low center candle right here. Two candles to the left that are higher. Two candles to the right that are higher. So this is a level of support. This is a level of support. And then, of course, this is a level of support. So um, we do have another level of support right here. Right here where my mouse is. So we have this uh, low center candle. I got two candles to the left that are higher and two candles to the right that are higher. So I'm going to section this off and then I'm going to double check it with my smart support tool. So I'm going to go ahead, make it a zone between the bottom of that wick and the bottom of the body of the candle. Cool. Let me pull this over just a little. And then for my weekly, I use blue. And that is my weekly because we are so close to the monthly resistance level right now. I don't see a weekly level that I can identify that's um, yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with the monthly for right now. So now I'm going to drop down to the daily. See what I see. So this is, oh, let me go back. Cause I didn't do the, uh, to show you the smart support. So we're going to do smart support and you'll see it identify the levels that we've already identified. So a level here, level here. It looks like there is a level here. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave that alone though. <clears throat> All right, we'll stretch that out. I'm going to go down to the daily. And I'm looking for my next high that's away from this zone. So we got a high, we got a low. It looks like uh, another high is forming, but we would have to wait two days. So Monday, five, to see if this would actually be a high. So I'm not going to pick anything right now. But what I can do is I can pick this as the daily low because this is a low center candle. I got two candles to the left that are higher, two candles to the right that are higher. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool. <clears throat> And I'm going to draw from the bottom of the wick to the bottom of the wick of the next candle to the right and stretch that across. Now my daily color is red. And if I want to double check it, I can go over to smart support and you'll see that the levels that we've already identified, see those black lines that popped up. It says S1 155297. We've already identified this as the zone. So I'm going to take this off. And then I'm going to drop down to the four hour <clears throat> and look and see if I have a high or a low. So this was my high. This was my original low. Then price pulled back up into this monthly zone and dropped off the cliff. And so um, this is so close to this monthly level that I am not going to choose this. So this was my high. This was my major low. My next high is here. This is technically a high right here because we have two candles to the left that are lower and two candles to the right that are lower. So this, the system will likely identify as a resistance level, which we see right here. Um, and it, what we talked about over here, but because it's so close, I'm not going to, because it's so close to the zone, this is why we draw zones. I'm not going to identify this uh, resistance too, but I am going to identify this resistance one. And so I'm going to draw from the top of the wick to the top of the wick next to it as the zone. <clears throat> and we are on the four hour. So my four hour is gray and I color code the uh, different time frames because when I'm on the go, because I don't sit at the chart all day, you know, we sit down uh, weekly and mark up a chart. So I just check my stuff pretty much on the go. Um, I can look real quick and see where I am, see where price is. So now I see a low here too, right here. So I have 
the low right here, two candles to the left that are higher, and two candles to the right that are higher. So I'm gonna draw a little zone here. So I'm gonna draw from here to the bottom of that wick and stretch that across. Now maybe I should, I'm just thinking. <clears throat> Maybe, maybe, maybe. I think I'm going to change this up. I know I said I wasn't going to do this level, but I think this might be important. So I'm going to draw from the top of the wick to the top of the body. Stretch that across. That's a four hour. And then I know um, if I hit this on the lower time frame, this is going to be a zone. And actually, I'm going to go from the top of this wick to the top of this candle, this wick over here. That's going to be my zone. All right. Now we got to draw. We, ooh, if I can talk. <laughs> now we got our zones drawn out, right? So that was the uh, very important thing. That's the way I usually start marking up my charts is I go through and I identify my key zones first. Then I go back and I look at my fibs in correlation with my zones. So I'm going to go to the monthly. Although this probably ain't going to show me much, but I still want to see. So I'm going to take my smart fib in my smart toolbox. I'm going to go to the low. I'm going to click at the last low and click. And it gives me the current fib sequence that we're in. So looking at this on the monthly, we have, okay, let me back up. So you see it popped up two separate Fibonacci's. Um, one has no background. Right. That's because the fib completed. So it says this is the A low. This is the B high. We had a pull back to the 50 percent fib line and price reached the D extension up here at the top. So for those of you who have been watching for a while, you know what this means. This means that price pull back to a red level. It anticipated to take profit at the red extension, which is exactly what happened here. So this is not currently highlighted because this fib has played out. It's happened. The current fib that we are on right now, you'll see it has a green background and yellow. Um, what this green means is that this is a great risk to reward setup play. Whereas yellow, yeah, you might be able to make some money, but the real play, you want price to come down to these levels. Now that's all gonna be dependent upon what your trading plan says, what you choose to do uh but we like to trade at least at the 50 61 8 and deeper okay so looking at this i have a a low i have a b high looks like price hit the 23 6 but we did not hit the 38 2 and so price is stalled at less than the 118 and so price may be trying to make its way up to this 118 um, or it looks like we've got big rejection at this level. Now let's go back left. Yeah. So this is a past. I'm looking back here. Okay. So this is a significant level where price has clearly rejected from. So we, we made this high and you see like when you see wicks price reached this level and then the sellers came into the market and pushed price down. Right. And so there was major rejection off of this level. And then you'll see we approached it again. And the sellers came into the market and pushed price down. We come back to this level and the sellers come into the market and push this price down. So this is a significant level. This is our monthly resistance. So it's I don't want to say it's not going to reach the 118, which is what we see when we have shallow retracements in between. We see price stall out typically between here, but we've hit a major level of resistance. So price may not even make it up there. And what we could potentially see is a deeper retracement, at least to the 38.2 before we see price continue. Now, this is the monthly chart. So this is the long term play. This is not like money that you make right now. This just gives you an overview of what's happening long term in the market. OK, <laughs> excuse me. So now I'm going to go down to let me carry this down. So if I want to link it to a lower time frame, I right click the Fibonacci and I go link object lower time frame and then I drive down to my weekly because I want to see what's going on on the weekly, too. And so now on the weekly. <clears throat> on the weekly 
yeah <laughs> on the weekly we probably this is the level so all right sorry y'all i'm trying to get my thoughts together <laughs> i am going to turn this green that's the 38 too and then i'm gonna do this too because ideally i'd love to see price come back here all right, so what we got going on, remember I said when the fib is white, the move has already happened. Fib is played out. The highlighted fib, which is what we see here with the green background and the yellow background, this is the current fib. So on the weekly, we have an A low here back in, what is this, May? We have a B high that happened in March. And then we got a shallow, shallow retracement here. What was this, in April? Another shallow retracement here in July uh so price has found support at this level but each time let's see so this was the first pullback then price made a deeper retracement then price came back to the same area couldn't break through but now we didn't get as much rejection back in December off this level that we saw back here with these wicks and so um price has not reached the 38.2 so this is a shallow retracement and price just barely kissed what is that the 118 yeah so let me drop a line so y'all can see what i'm talking about so price just barely let me make this skinny price just barely kissed the 118 and you you know what we said before that when we have shallow retracements which is what we have here price didn't even hit the 23.6 you'll see price didn't even hit here we see price stall out typically between this 118 and 118 okay so i'm gonna get rid of this because we already know what we're talking about and then when price doesn't make that move we typically see a deeper retracement that comes down at least to the 38.2 so that's 144 19 or what i'd love to see is price come to the 618 which is 138.5 or 497 to be exact so I'm going to toss my Ray on here. Now, I want to show you smart trend lines too, but let me do that first. Let me turn this off. This is why I love, I, I really do love Smart Trader. It took a minute for me to get used to it um, because I have been using TradingView for so long. But um, now I'm like, you know, it makes marking up the charts faster. And for those of you who are a part of our group, you know, Saturday mornings, we going through 28 pairs. So this makes it much, much easier. So I'm going to go ahead, drop this, and it finds the swing low. So to draw trend lines, you should be drawing from swing low to swing low. And so that's what it does. And um, I'm going to drop a trend line. Oh, we had a trend line right now. Okay. Let me um, delete this. So let me go down a time frame. But what we got going on here right now, what I see right now is that we probably – are gonna be headed to the downside. Cause we've tried to break this level, not once, not twice, three times. Now we could see price continue up. We could, <coughs> I don't wanna say we can't. We could see price continue up because this is a red level. Price could somehow gain momentum and hit this uh, 618, but knowing what we know about what's happening with um the market and i'll explain a little bit more you know i'm trying to sharpen these fundamental skills okay y'all ready so i paused this video because i want to give you the breakdown on the fundamentals as i understand them now you know i'm working on strengthening this skill but my buddies ryan and benny they have this down pat so this is what we talked about this morning with gbp jpy there's a couple things that can happen and influence how this currency pair moves so the first thing is that there is potential risk of war so that will definitely impact how this moves and then also there is talks of the interest rates being increased, but there's no inclination from the government on how aggressive and how quickly they will raise these rates. So we don't know if they're going to be raised 50 basis points, 100 basis points like next week. We, we don't know when that happens. We're moving into a risk off scenario when there's uncertainty in the market. Investors want to protect their capital. So what we see is that they want to move their money to safe spaces. And the safe space in GBP JPY 
is the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen is one of the safe haven currencies. When we see money being moved into the yen, it becomes stronger, right? There's more money being put into that currency, so it becomes stronger. And so in this scenario, if we got the Great British Pound that becomes weak and the Japanese yen that becomes strong, that presents a potential selling opportunity. All right, let's get back to the chart. And let me grab a trend line so I could draw out what I'm seeing in my head. Um, and this is on the weekly. Hold on. <clears throat> let me get it together, y'all. So I'm going to draw from this low. And then I'm going to take my trend line to the next low. So I hit the swing low. Then I went to the next touch, which is here. And then I take my next ray and I start from the last touch. And go to the next touch which is here okay <clears throat> and so what we could see is something like and that's not even that pretty to me right now but um a break of this trend line and a potential retest let me try to make it pretty <laughs> And then um, a continuation to the downside. Now, I'm not saying it'll happen exactly like this, but we know that the market moves in waves and price won't come just straight down. So I would anticipate seeing something like in a wave sequence. This would be the 38.2, which if you want to trade to the downside, you can. Um, that is what... That is, ooh, 1,400 pips if we have that happen. If price somehow gets, ooh, ooh, 1,900 pips potentially, potentially. I'm not saying that's going to happen at all. Either way, I'm not saying it's going to happen. You have to try it what you see. Not what you want to happen, what you see. So let me see. We got that option. Um, I'm gonna have to take a screenshot of that, but I am on a weekly and I want to drill it down just a little bit more. So let me go down to the daily. Let me drill it down to the daily. And this look even worse. Close up. <laughs> oh, Okay. That still ain't pretty. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> See, look. So we tried to break through one. We tried to break through two. We tried to break through three. And nothing. Nothing yet. And then we got all of this selling pressure at the close on Friday. Let me see. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like a break and then a retest. And now that I'm looking at it closer, <clears throat> I want to draw this a little bit better. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Lord have mercy. All right. So something like... Something like this, a break, a retest, and then a move to the downside. That's what I would anticipate. Something coming, testing the backside of this trend line, and then making its way to a 38.2. <clears throat> that's what I would anticipate to see so this is the daily yeah so we tried to break through up here let me draw ellipsis that's the first attempt second attempt and now we had a third attempt last week to break and we got strong rejection off of the slow. You see those wicks? Now, if we look here, 
price found support at this level on a daily one, two, three, four, five, six, which is where we are right now. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out and what ends up happening. Um, but let me look at this one other way. Let me see. Uh-oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me grab this. All right, so I want to take a look and see where we are with our fibs. So I'm going to go to the last low, which is going to be here. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab my smart fibs. And I'm going to click. Hold on, let me see. Actually, I'm going to click here. Because I want to see where we are. So remember, the fib that doesn't have the background is finished out. So if we look, we had A, we had a B. Price pulled back to the 50% fib. So I could have started my fib there. That's why I was debating. <laughs> um, and then price finished and took profit at this level. So now the current fib that we are on is A, B. We have less than a 23.6 pullback. Price has played in this area and stalled, and it has not been able to break through. Um, it has not been able to break through. So, yeah, this is the same what we saw in the weekly. So I would want to see price at least come back to this level, the 38.2. It would be great to see it come to the 61.8. Well, let me break it down even further on a smaller time frame. Let me get rid of this because we've already highlighted the area that we need to be watching. I'm going to go down to the four hour and see what we see. <clears throat> I'm sorry this video is so long, y'all. <laughs> I am sorry. So I want to go from my last low. So I'm going to take my smart fib tool and I'm going to click at the last low. Oh, that's not what I want. Let me click it again. I believe we are over here. All right. And actually, no, this is done. This is my next level. <clears throat> Let's see. So these finish A, B. That was 38.2. And we hit the D extension. There we go. So I see it. Um, on the smaller time frame, what I'm looking at, let me put this so y'all can see. Oh, Lord. Okay, so on the smaller time frame, I'm looking at the fibs to see if we hit an extension to the upside um, to see if we'll possibly be changing directions at this point. So this is the last fib that I'm looking at. I have an A low right here. I have a B high. We got a 38.2 pullback. And so the matching extension for that 38.2 is this 157.852, which it looks like we just barely by a couple pips missed this level. Um, so I would still count this as, oh no. And then we went back here and we hit it. So this, uh, yeah, this level has been hit. And so price is finished to the upside on a lower time frame. So let me get rid of this trend line because that was drawn on a higher time frame. I want to see this on the lower. Let me see on the lower what we got. Let me get rid of these fibs. And let me do this. I'm going to grab my ray. And I'm going to go from swing low to swing low. Not cutting through any candles. So I got a low here, a low here. And then I'm going to go from the next low. Which is here. To here. Right. And then I'm gonna blow this up just a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm drawing the trend lines to the upside because I wanna see price break through, like I anticipate a sale. So uh, I'm gonna go from the last touch to the next touch. Yep, look, ooh, okay. Hold on, I'm getting a little sloppy with my, there we go. Okay, so what I'm looking at 
we've already broken a trend line, an inner trend line. So price came through, broke this level, came back, retested this. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a break and then another retest and then start moving to the downside, honestly, Te from a technical perspective. Um, yeah, because look, that's like, that's crazy. We had already drawn this level as a level of resistance. Then we get our trend line and the trend line confirms that, you know, price broke through here. We retested the backside and now price is trying to push down. So um, how you enter this, <laughs> um, I would wait for another high to form. So either pr price is going to make a low, then it's going to pull back. And I would wait for a pull back and then um, be looking for a potential sale. Um, and of course, I play what the market gives me, not what I want it to be. <laughs> so I'm going to wait for all of my criteria to be met before I look for a position on this. But so far, my bias is uh, a short for sure. So this one we covered in our weekly ritual and my guy Ryan broke this all the way down, all the way down. And it was so good. So um, if you are looking for a group of like-minded individuals and you want to understand the charts, not only from the technical perspective, but also the fundamental perspective, you want to make sure that you click the link below the video that offers uh, the mentorship opportunity. Every Saturday morning, we get up, we go through 28 pairs. And from a technical perspective, we break them down. And also from a fundamental perspective, we break them down. Um, if you are not ready for that type of commitment yet, as far as mentorship, um, then you'll want to make sure you check out the No Cost Forex Facebook group by clicking the link below the video that says join the No Cost Forex Facebook group. And there we do periodic trainings um, that are no cost. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this chart. It'll be available as a link below this video. And um, I appreciate you guys for watching. And I will see you on the next video. And if you found this to be helpful at all, Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. I will talk to you soon. Bye.